Now we are looking at the teaching video on the application of differentiation. Maxima, minima. First, we look at the symbols of differentiation. When we have the first derivative of the function y equals fx, then the symbol is just dy over dx. When we look at the second derivative, what it really means is after you differentiate a function once, you get dy over dx, then you differentiate that with respect to x. So the symbol will be d squared y over dx squared. The second derivative d squared y over dx squared can be rewritten as d dx of your first derivative which is dy over dx. What it means is the rate of change of the gradient dy over dx with respect to x. Sometimes you come across this short form w dot r dot t dot x. It says the same thing with respect to x. So once more the second derivative, this is a simple d squared y over dx squared, really is just the differentiation of the first derivative with respect to x. Now we look at this graph, and in specific, we look at stationary points. These are stationary points. Stationary points are points where you have the peak or the trough. So for this topic, we call all peaks maxima. The layman's term is peak. And where you see all the low points, the trough, in this topic we call them minima. The layman's term, trough. But you can see these two high points, which we call the peaks or the maxima, one of them is higher than the other. In this context, the highest point is this point. And there is a name for it. It's the maximum point. They cannot be more than one maximum point in a graph, but it can be, there can be more than one maxima. So the lowest point here is called minima, a minimum point. Again, there cannot be more than one minimum point, but there can be more than one Minima. When we look at the characteristic of the stationary point, you can see I have a horizontal line across. Those horizontal lines are just tangent to the curve. Because the tangent 
are straight lines and they are horizontal to the x-axis you can say the gradient of those points are zero one more time the horizontal lines represent the tangent these are tangents to the curve and they are horizontal and therefore the gradient of the tangents are zero also that means the gradient of this curve at those points which we call the stationary points have a gradient of zero here we have a case where we have a maximum point at x1 if you look at points I take before the x1 and points I take after x1 I have got a tangent to this point and this tangent from left to right is rising up and the gradient of that line the tangent will be a positive gradient I call it m greater than zero and here at the stationary point where you have the maximum point as well a tangent to it is a horizontal line this implies that the gradient is zero at this point a point after x1 you have a straight line and that straight line is a tangent to the curve at this point this line from left to right is dipping downwards the gradient is negative so I call it gradient less than zero you can see if I move along the curve positive gradient then at this point gradient becomes zero and I move along that curve gradients becomes negative so if I have a case like that from positive to negative is saying decreasing gradient you can see that tells you in this expression the second derivative of the function less than zero is decreasing from positive to negative less than zero so how do you identify from differentiation that a certain graph has a maximum point first you have to know where the stationary point is so in this case the stationary point is at x equals to x1 and if you have the second derivative value and if it's a negative you can be very sure that point that curve will have a maximum point Another way to look at it is take one point before the stationary point and one point on the curve after the stationary point. Here, this expression x less than x1, meaning this point here, it is before x1. The gradient is positive. Yeah? And when you take the gradient at the stationary point and is zero and if you take a point just after the stationary point but on the curve if the gradient is less than zero then you also have a maximum point on the curve so really there are two ways to look at this to determine whether your curve has a maximum point or not
for the case of minimum point. You can see a tangent here is dipping from left to right. So the gradient is negative. This is a horizontal line. This is the gradient, uh, this is the tangent to the curve at x equals to x1 on the curve. So it's a horizontal line, so the gradient is 0. Next, further down, where you have a point beyond x1, but on the curve, if I have a gradient there, you can see from left to right, the gradient is rising up. So the gradient is positive gradient. So if I go from left to right, you can see I have a negative gradient and move along the curve and I have positive gradient over this side. So if you look at the second derivative, you see a positive value. What it means is from negative, your gradient has become positive. So it's increasing rate of change of gradient with respect to x. There is another way to see it. If you take a point just before the x1 but on the curve, if the gradient is less than 0 or the gradient is negative, and if you take a point at the stationary point and the gradient is 0 and then if you take a point after x1 but on the curve and the gradient is greater than 0 you also have a case where you have minimum point. So we are beginning to see that the second derivative is going to play an important part in determining whether you have a maximum point on the curve or minimum point on the curve. Now we look at points of inflection or saddle points. You know, sometimes we have a uh, curve like this. And you know, even in curves like this, when you differentiate the function, at this point, your dy over dx is equal to 0. But for saddle points, like this point here, your second derivative of the function is going to give you 0. So what we'll do, if this point is x1, I would want to take a point just before that. So I call this x, which is less than x1. So it's a point on the curve before the, the stationary point here. You can see if I draw a tangent to it, this tangent is dipping downwards from left to right. So the gradient is less than 0. If I take a point further down the curve from x1 and I draw a tangent to that point, and you notice that the tangent is dipping from left to right. So again, the gradient is negative. So you can see when x less than x1, your gradient is less than 0. Of course, at this point where 
x is equal to x1, your gradient is 0. And then if you take a point beyond x1 and your gradient is still negative, then certainly this will conclude that this point here where x is equal to x1, that point is a point of inflection or a settled point. I give you another situation. Call this one x1. A point on the curve where x is equal to x1. If I take a point here, and that point, the x is less than x1, meaning a point before x1, I draw a tangent to that point. You can see the tangent is rising up from left to right. It means the gradient of that line will be positive gradient. If I take a point beyond x1, somewhere here where x is greater than x1, I draw a tangent to that point, you can see the gradient will be positive because the tangent is rising from left to right. So in this arrangement again, where the gradients are of the same sign, positive, positive, or negative, negative, you have a case where the point on the curve where x is equal to x1 is a point of inflection or a settled point. Now we are looking at maximum and minimum value of y. So for a function like this, y equals fx. If your first derivative is a zero, you can be very sure by just that you have a stationary point at x equals x1. So if I just put in a second derivative here, d squared y over dx squared greater than 0, then I would say the function with the value of a put inside, I should be putting in not a but x1 inside, the value of x, then that will be your minimum value of y. Same here, if you see the first derivative equals to 0, you can be sure you have a stationary point at x equals to x1. And therefore, you look for the second derivative. If the second derivative is going to give you a negative value, then putting in this value of x into the fx, I will get a maximum value of y. So you can see from all this section of work, the second derivative comes in. And second derivatives is going to be the determinant whether your curve has a maximum point or a minimum point. So to run through it very quickly, the first derivative when it is 0, you know you have a stationary point. And the second derivative will determine whether you have a maximum or a minimum point. Now, the third case of course is when your first derivative is a 0 and your second derivative is also zero, 
not as in these two cases where you either have positive or negative value that case will be a case where you have the point of inflection or settle point so these are the three natures of the curve that's the end for this section